Um, so I'm so glad that you're back on the show. Um, I loved our first episode and I thought this would be a great topic to kind of weave in <laughs> gut health. Um, yeah. So let's talk about like what are the effects um, that the gut has on our health? Yeah, so there are so many factors to consider when looking into our gut health. Um, it's important to look at your current circumstances as well as your history, as well as your mother's history and your grandmother's history, which is very, very interesting. Um, research has provided insight that vaginal childbirth and breastfeeding is um, optimal for positively colonizing our gut um so it is important to ask those questions to your mum and her and her mum yeah um and but there's other factors like history of antibiotic use medications stress toxins the environment that we live in and of course our food consumption yeah i think too like before having the kids i had never touched antibiotics and then all of a sudden, yeah. once I had the kids, I had the C-section, antibiotics and infections, then more surgeries. And then it, it just exploded. I had never had to not worry about my gut health. It had never bothered me um, mm -hmm. up until that point. So that effect, like you said, antibiotics, the stress, our environment yes. is just, it's just huge. So There's so much to consider. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So... Like you said, like, you know, stress and antibiotics, they kind of all affect our gut. So let's go a little bit deeper now and let's talk about the gut microbiome. I know a lot of people mm -hmm. have probably heard about microbiome, but they're probably not sure about what it is. So do you mind explaining? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> yeah, so the gut microbiome is located in our digestive system, which we probably already know. Um, so it's made up of microorganisms that create a gut flora. I like to think of it as a beautiful gut garden <laughs> that's either flourishing or struggling. I think that's an easy way to kind of picture it, this little gut garden going on. Um, so the gut microbiome interacts with the rest of the body and it plays a large role in inflammation and poor gut health can promote this inflammatory state that can create oxidative stress on the body, which can lead to uh, heaps of different chronic conditions. So it plays a major role in everything and really everything comes back to the gut. I know. that. How crazy is that? Um, yeah. Like even learning more about it and autoimmune diseases, it all stems from the gut. Like, you know, if you have skin yes. issues coming from the gut <laughs> what's your gut health like yeah, yeah. Uh, how's your gut garden yeah <laughs> yeah exactly how's your gut garden so yeah does so what does it mean when someone has a leaky gut like what are some of those symptoms yeah so a leaky gut is referring to intestinal permeability that basically means that the walls of the small intestine have become permeable um, which can lead to poor nutrient absorption and digestive issues and harmful bacteria and toxins can essentially seep through as opposed to our body digesting and, and naturally eliminating the unwanted particles that we consume. So I like to explain it of thinking of it like a, um, a fly screen. Mm. So there are small holes or tight junctions that are naturally porous but now picture rips through the fly screen, allowing these harmful molecules to easily pass through. So that would be a leaky gut. And is it possible to heal that gut wall, the yes. leaky gut, essentially? Yes, yes, yes. We can heal our leaky gut. I do recommend working one-on-one uh, -on -one with a qualified health professional uh, because everybody is so unique and different and it really... I like to say test, don't guess. So really get oh, to I the love bottom that. of things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, there are some things that we can, can start to do on, um, by ourselves, which we should all be doing. Yeah. So 
yeah, there's lots of things we can do to support our gut health. Um, I'll go into some. Yes, so, I'd love to know. <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's lots because there is a lot that does affect our gut health like we touched on before. Um, but one of the best ways is to start including prebiotics and probiotics. And I think there's some confusion when it comes to these terms. I think that people think they're the same thing or they don't quite understand what's the difference. Yeah, well, I'd love for you to go into it because you released a guide today talking about what the difference yes. are because, like you said in your poll, not many people understood what the difference was between pre and probiotics. So go into it. Yeah. Go into it. Tell us all. I was really <laughs> shocked. Yeah, there was like 60% of people said they didn't know the difference. So so prebiotics uh, can be found in non-digestible fibre-rich foods. Um, so they actually feed the beneficial bacteria in our gut. So they're really important. And I think that sometimes they're overlooked because everyone concentrates on probiotics. Mm. Um, so sources from food are asparagus, unripe bananas, which you can get green banana flour. I don't know if you've ever oh, seen that yeah. in the shops. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an easy way to add it into oh. baking and that sort of thing. Um, there's eggplant, garlic, Jerusalem artichokes, leeks and onions. So they're all great sources of prebiotics, which we can consume regularly in our diet. And then there's probiotics. So probiotics are live microorganisms that provide the beneficial gut bacteria. So they're very important, especially if, you know, you have had antibiotics in the past, that's going to counteract the effects um, that, you know. Yeah the antibiotics have taken away. (laughs) Um, So the sources of probiotics are fermented foods and they're all the rage right now. There's heaps of products coming out, uh, which is great, but we do have to be mindful of what's actually in these products. But some natural sources are uh, Greek yogurt, pickled vegetables, sauerkraut, kefir, kimchi, Uh, kombucha, Mm. miso, tempeh. So a lot of these things you can actually make yourself, like the pickled vegetables. Yes, you did that. It's really easy to do. Yeah, you did that. Yeah, I've been doing that a lot lately. (laughs) Yeah. um, It's lots of fun. Yeah, I I did that probably twice. And I think that when I did it, it told me to add a starter in it. But you don't add a starter to yours, do you? Do you? Not in my pickled vegetables, no. But if you were to do a sourdough loaf, you would need a starter as well as uh, kefir. You would yeah. need a starter. And kombucha, you have a... Um, a is it scooby? A scooby. Scooby, yeah. Yeah. Scooby. <laughs> a scooby, yeah. I can't remember <laughs> what it stands for, but I've done the whole kombucha thing and it, it's... It's, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I think next time when I do it, I'm going to do it your way and not, it was, it was essentially a, um, it was, I had to drain the yogurt and the, the liquid that I got from the yogurt, I, I put it in the veggies. What's it called again? Oh my oh. goodness. Okay. Oh, anyway, I'm going blank, but it, it we'll have to look yeah, it up. I'll have to look it up, but it's stuffed up. Um, it just went moldy. So I must have done something wrong, but I think adding, but not only that, like adding all of those, um, you know, sauerkraut and those pickled vegetables, they just give your food a different flavor as well. So yeah. it makes things so interesting, I think. Yes. And I will say with that, if you are new to consuming fermented foods, you want to start very small mm. and build up a tolerance because it can be a lot of bacteria and your gut microbiome will be like, what, what is this? Oh my goodness, what's going on? Well, so yeah. just have small amount. That's what I was going to ask you too. So essentially we need to find like a really nice balance for our garden, essentially, like the pre and the probiotics. Yes. but. What kind of happens if someone has too many probiotics and not enough probiotics? So, yeah, it can lead to digestive stress as well. So experiencing symptoms like bloating and Mm. flatulence and gas and everything else that comes (laughs) with digestive stress, uh, which isn't good. Yeah, and I think that um, 
with all the the rage and how trendy it is at the moment to be consuming these products, they are being overconsumed. Like if you take kombucha, for example, yeah. you shouldn't be drinking a full bottle of kombucha. That is just too full on for your gut. And a lot of the time, if you turn the packets over, it'll actually be a serving size of two. Oh, right. Rather than one. Yeah. I've never looked Because it. it's just too much for your gut to handle. But yeah, so it shouldn't be a replacement soft drink, you know? <laughs> People <laughs> seem to be replacing it for soft drink, which is good yeah. because we want to get rid of soft drink. Yeah. But it shouldn't be consumed in the in that proportion. Oh, wow. I never really – it does make sense though because sometimes if – I do overconsume, um, then I do get that little bit of upset tummy. I think it's just about finding what works for you and your balance, Definitely. essentially. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the thing. I, it is all so unique, and science is still unfolding, and there's so much research going into this that we actually don't know all that much yet. So it's a very interesting space at the moment. Yeah. Oh. Totally is. I think every time I just pick up a book or I read an article, my mind is blown. Like I, I learned quite a bit about the whole mind gut connection and how powerful yes. that is. Yeah. Um, and how just our gut health affects our moods. Um, yes. Like, yeah. So there, there's many other things. Like I touched on, um, yeah, prebiotics and probiotics, of course. But there's other things that can affect our gut. So managing stress. Stress is a major factor on our gut health. Um, and there's also other things like we need to ensure we're getting regular movement. We're prioritizing sleep. We're eating mindfully and slowly to allow that digestive process. Um, and then, of course, limiting processed foods, sugar, caffeine, alcohol, Additives, these have all, um, there's all research showing that these can disturb our gut. So, yeah, yeah. and of course, we always come back to eating natural, yeah. seasonal, real <laughs> foods, and staying hydrated is important as 100%. well. <laughs> and because, like, all of those foods that you mentioned too, like the sugar, the coffee, the alcohol, they're all inflammatory. So, it's just yeah. like our gut is. It's copying a beating. It's too much for our yeah, gut to handle. Yeah, it's too yeah. much. And, like, what do you recommend? So just say that someone eats a lot of sugar, they still drink, but then they'll take a probiotic. Is that enough? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. The short answer is no. Yeah. So, like, there's just so much we can do. And if you are taking probiotics, I really do recommend working with a practitioner to make sure you are consuming the right strains mm. that your body needs. And then, of course, yeah, we need to make sure that we're not counteracting that with putting all these harmful substances into our body. I'm not saying you can't have a bit of sugar and some yeah, alcohol from time to time. Yeah. I surely do. Yeah. But, yeah, we don't want to bombard our system. Yeah, 100% because it's there's no point in you taking the probiotic in the first yeah. place. Um, but oh, yeah. I love talking about gut health. I think, Me yeah, too. I love it. I just learned so much. And I think too, like even having the boys, that's kind of where the journey started because they were C-section babies. And like you said at the start, yeah. it's just been found that like a vaginal birth is just so much better for, you know, gut flora and all of that stuff. And I was yeah. adamant that my boys were going to have great gut health, even though <laughs> they were C-section yeah. babies. Well, Fortunately, there is so much we can do to, yeah, counteract that. So it really is an amazing space. Yeah, 100%. It's like we can always get it functioning like it's meant to be, if that makes sense. Um, yes. It's not like you've got a leaky gut, you're going to have a leaky gut forever. There's so many things, like you mentioned, that you can do. Um, yeah. And so much that. You and I think it's something that you're constantly having to work at as well. Yeah. I think, it's yeah. a never-ending cycle. 100%. <laughs> Depending where you're at in life, you know, if you're going through a stressful period, then that will affect your gut at that point in time. If you're not sleeping well, then, yeah, that might come out in gut issues. Yeah, and I, I've been on a little journey myself these past couple of months in, like, gut was running smoothly and then all of a sudden, like, stress, you know, and then that's kind of taken a turn on thing. It's like, okay, well, I, 
I can't eat that anymore because it just doesn't agree with me. Um, like I've had to take yeah. out protein powders um, and yeah. real processed foods because it just gets stuck. Um, yeah. And it's that that just is because I'm a little bit more aware of my body. And I think that that's what happens too when you work with your gut and you – Yeah. Yeah. Like we spoke about last time, you know, last episode, yeah, it is all about getting intuitive. So that's amazing that you're listening to that biofeedback and changing it. Yeah. Applying it to how you are eating. I, I think too because I know how great I can feel and that's what I think mm. a lot of people are missing too is that they don't know how good they can feel. I think we mentioned this on our last episode. Um, and when you get to that point of feeling absolutely amazing, you're like, okay, how can I yeah. be better? Get back yeah, there. Yeah, back there. <laughs> and stay there. <laughs> don't move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 100%. Um, so is there anything else that you wanted to add or share about gut health that we may have missed out on? Well, I think, yeah, the guide that I've just created, um, funnily enough, perfect timing, yep. Uh is packed full of more information, but yeah, there really is so much you can do and don't get down if uh, you are experiencing digestive stress because it's just a multifaceted thing that we can approach with and little baby steps and we get closer, closer. So yeah, a hundred percent. So, you know, I like to end the show with a question. (laughs) So what would you recommend? Like someone's listened to this episode and they're like, okay, I, I want to take control of my gut health now. I want to do things to support my health now, my gut health. What can they do? My number one tip for gut healing is to consume bone broth. Oh, yes. And, yeah, I go, on, I go on about this a lot. I recently just wrote an article all about it because I'm just fascinated at how powerful it is. Um, but it's just full of amazing benefits to heal that leaky gut, that gut lining. So, yeah, I would recommend consuming bone broth every single day. I forgot about that. That's something that I gave to my kids like at a very young yeah. age because that was where I started. Yeah. I so made good. my own so and I put it in their little sippy cups. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's amazing. So, and it's so easy to make. Like it's. Yes. And it costs nothing yeah. to make. Costs nothing. You just get great, good quality bones, grass fed bones. Use the meat from the bones and then cook them back up. And it's just, it's really cost effective, waste free. And you can also buy um, concentrates yes. or dehydrated versions to make things easy if you haven't. Yeah. If you can't be bothered going to the <laughs> process of making it. Well, you know what I do too with those concentrates? I like add them to curries or sauces. Yeah. Like I'm. Yeah a bone broth um, fanatic. Um. <laughs> yes, me too. It's great. Yeah. And you just replace it for any recipe that calls for stock. Yeah. You use bone broth. And like you said, so that's it. That's it. like you said, drinking a cup Easy. a day as well. Yeah. Um, even yeah. as a snack with a pinch of salt. Yeah, I love it. Oh. Amazing. <laughs> I know people think I'm crazy, but I look forward to it. It's like my 11 a.m. little snack is my bone broth. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh. Sounds amazing. Yeah, Yeah, my kids love it. And it's so easy too. So I'm so glad you mentioned that. I completely forgot. I'm sure you have a recipe on your website. I know I have one. And there's so many things too. Like I've started adding like ginger and turmeric and those real anti-inflammatory ingredients as well just to – yeah, pack it full of nutrients. Love pack it. it full, yeah. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for com- coming back on. Um, but like Stacey mentioned, she has a free gut health guide. Um, we're going to pop the link in the show notes um, so you guys can download it. And, yeah, please share with everyone again where they can find you. Um, so, yeah, I mostly hang out on Instagram at Natural Spoonfuls. And my website is naturalspoonfuls.com.au. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for jumping on again. And, yeah, I look forward to having another interesting chat very soon. Me too. Thank you so much for having me.